What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly combustible reaction. We're gonna be jumping into the next one on our Netherlands journey. Dutch architecture in the USA. If you guys enjoy it, go show Dutch culture USA some love on their channel. We're subscribed. I hope you will too. Uh, let's go. Let's see what we got. We're not unsubscribing. We just got there. The Netherlands has had a big influence on contemporary architecture around the world. With architects such as Rem Koolhaas, Dutch architecture became a world-renowned brand with projects all over Europe, the Middle East and Asia. That looked like one of the craziest the library brands. buildings. What with is this? With projects all over Europe. It is a library building. That is very, very unique. I've never seen anything where it looks like books are way up in the ceiling like that. That looks amazing. I want to go to this library. So tell me, is it just like everywhere that has weird looking architecture? Chances are it's probably Dutch or... The Middle East and Asia. The last few years, Dutch architects are also leaving a mark on the United States. Many opened up an office here in New York City and their projects are popping up all around the country. I think being Dutch already means that you were pushed over uh, the threshold of understanding that everything is possible. Creating a, an entire land, an entire country, yeah. at a location where originally or naturally uh, there was water. Yeah, taking back the land from Poseidon himself. We know the Dutchies go above and beyond when it comes to things. Stealing the damn orange carrot. Seriously? They didn't even steal it. They created it and then forced it on the rest of the world. Made us believe that carrots are really orange when they're not. Where originally or naturally... I'll never uh, let you live that, that down. Water ...is totally possible. So it's easier, wherever that is... To, to come up with solutions to manipulate natural conditions. We've had two decades of building this. The commission was a horticultural master plan for the entire 25 acres of the battery. The park was in terrible need of a new vision. Everything was very downtrodden, no spirit of beauty, and it was... I'm just saying that this kind of already looks like home. This is just kind of what it looks like in a lot of the places where I've lived in America, at least. So the battery, the park was this a park like this is something that you see once at a blue moon in a city that actually gives a damn about whether or not they have parks. Part of cultural master plan for the entire 25 acres of the battery. The park was in terrible need of a new vision. Everything was very downtrodden, no spirit of beauty, and it was hosting millions of visitors from around the world. And this is what they thought of us as New Yorkers. One of my donors said, Warry, do you know the work of Piet Aldolf, the Dutchman? I think he had five books published at the time, and I ordered all of them. And I went, I love the aesthetic. I love the wildness, the, the sense of nature in control. No one was really understanding that gardens are the charm. They bring the bees, the insects, uh, the birds. They, they bring the balance of nature, which we so sorely need to do. In a lot of our places, sadly, sorely, we need to do because we've really kind of gotten rid of a lot of trees. Unless you're in one of those kind of uh, environmentally friendly cities, some cities out there don't have any trees left. They, they bring the balance of nature, like, which we so sorely need, need to do. The renovation of our central branch library in New York City is the biggest physical project in the history, 125 year history of the New York Public Library. It's a $200 million project. It's our premier location. We needed the best architect in the world. We scoured the world. We found Francie. I think it was the perfect match. Um, I think that with all dovetail selection processes, this is how it shakes out. 
Um, I'm a firm believer in international, you know, global outlook. I think Francine bought an invaluable amount of library experience. We took a decrepit old building that had, was not even built to be a library, it was built to be a department store, and turned it into the state-of-the-art central library of New York City, the capital of the world. Seeing what Francine did is absolutely extraordinary. I don't know about that, like New York City, the capital of the world. I don't know about all that. The capital of the world. He did Seeing say that, though. what Francine though. did is absolutely extraordinary. She opened it up, daylight comes in, she raised the ceilings. The building looks to me like, you know, in the interior, it's three times the size I would have imagined it possibly could be. So it's a real gift to the city. Because I, I started as a sculptor, I can't think flat at all. I always think everything 3D, which makes it really difficult for myself. And that's also why I was in the 90s, early 90s already working 3D on the computer, because it for me was a huge help, you know, because I was very bad in thinking in plan or section only, because for me it's actually the space. This is all ridiculously beautiful architecture. Like, I couldn't imagine living, like, anywhere with some of this stuff. It's just so, I don't know, posh. From the beginning, I've been kind of a pioneer. We were... I think Thailand has some of this on there. Um, we have almost, like, these same folding blind things around the mall. From the beginning, I've been kind of a pioneer. We were digital, one of the first completely digital offices. And after 20 years of digital design, it has very much changed how we manufacture components in architecture and, and how everything is built. This was in the Unprivate House show, the, the show in MoMA, um, house in Millbrook. This is Tia Chubani. It's amazing what these things start off as model-wise and then what they become in real this life. This recent office that we're building prefab for her upstate, the little house, and this is the gallery. And we're really on the brink of a major change of how buildings are built, you know, on site as well as in the factory. So it's- We are on the brink of how models are made too. Look what we went from with the hand-built models to what we are at with the gallery's 3D printed model. Office that we're Very interesting. For her I never thought about 3D printing models. And this is the gallery. And we're really oh, no, maybe on it's the not 3D printed. A major change of how buildings are built, you know, on site as well as in the factory. So it's a super exciting period. I graduated in the 90s in the Netherlands and obviously we had the super Dutch era at that moment with many of the firms that are quite well known. I realized there's maybe more to learn. I felt going to Japan at that moment, which was doing very different things that were happening in the, in the Netherlands, would be very beneficial and I think I learned a lot there and through working there I ended up in the US. This is downtown Brooklyn, it's really exciting. If you look at all these buildings, they're all, they're all new. This is because there was a rezoning a decade ago. And so for us to be in the center of that is really exciting. I think maybe in the past, people always thought Manhattan is where you have to be, but we very early on decided to be in Brooklyn because actually Brooklyn is much more you know, sort of future oriented if you think about it. I don't see that we are a Dutch firm. Um, I also don't see ourselves as an American firm. In some way, the idea of nationality is, is a complicated one, but I do think we are very much a New York firm, uh, in a sense that New York represents exactly all of these things that we're interested in, the ability for people to come from you know, anywhere and do something you know, meaningful with their lives. We've noticed that clients or large developers and, and governments elsewhere in the world, like in Asia or in the Middle East, they somehow, that, that whole New York thing is something magical. 
And that, that is basically number one. We want to work with someone from New York. I have seen the park. We just like the fact that, you know, our, our projects are, are well liked by people and considered to be, you know, uh, attractive. We're not sort of like the same cookie cutter, like copy paste, looking at other people kind of firm. You know, we, we have fun. We, we always want to come up with very good design that like really match uh, the location. But also we understand that, you know, a, a level of uh, joy is also super important. I love that he said that, a level of joy in what you're doing and in the building and in the construction and in everything, a level of joy. Very, very cool video explaining that some of the some of the places that I actually know in America are really inspired or created by Dutch architects. Like very, very cool. Uh, it's cool, kind of cool that the world looks at the Dutch things and go, "Damn, we want something kind of like that." Like, <laughs> can you guys come over and? That's cool to me that there's able to be that international kind of cooperation when it comes to the architect community and building these ridiculous buildings and skyscrapers and just even homes like it's just very very cool it's always a good road to find out something else new as dutch as long as it's not like they turn the cauliflower white because i don't know if i'll be able to handle that uh most certainly go over and show dutch culture usa some love on their channel we already did just making sure hit that like button if you liked it the dislike button if you disliked it check out one of my other videos up there subscribe right here if you want to see more content possibly your content until the next one i'm highly possible you guys be happy healthy safe i love you to the moon and back peace